Shaolin shadow boxing, and the Wu Tang sword style. Guys, I'm going to tell you a story that really drove me to insanity. And it's also a story of why for any large purchase, you should always use a credit card. Always. Okay guys, so you've probably guessed I'm going to tell you about a credit card function called a chargeback. You might not know this, but you are not liable for fraudulent charges on your credit card. According to the Fair Credit Billing Act, your liability stops at $50, and any amount above that your credit card company is liable for. But in reality, most credit card companies go above and beyond and give you total fraud protection for any dollar amount. The charges will also be frozen in your account and you will not pay any interest on that debt or be expected to pay the charge for the entire duration of while they are investigating and confirming the fraud. Remember this point. So my story starts on March 14th when I bought $1,072 worth of goods at Ikea. Look, there's my receipt. Now, if you've ever been to Ikea, you'll know that you first pay for your goods at one register, then you go grab the delicious meatballs, and then you go to another counter to pay for delivery. So I did just that. I paid for my stuff at the register, went and ate the meatballs, and then went to the other counter to organize delivery for about half of the stuff that I bought, which was all the large items that didn't fit in my cart. Now, alarm bells should have started ringing when the guys at that counter took an hour, yes, an hour, to organize my delivery, messing around on the computer. Anyway, they seem to have organized it, but with the delivery date three weeks in the future, which sucked, but I took it. I waited three weeks and the delivery never came. So I called Ikea's customer service line. Now by now, Ikea had already shut all its stores. And if you're a kid watching this in 50 years time, in the year 2020, we had something called Rona, which shut the entire world down. Go ask your grandpa about it. Anyway, first of all, I got this message. Thank you for calling Ikea. Due to COVID-19, you may experience longer than anticipated wait times. Okay, longer than normal wait times, no problem. I've got unlimited minutes on my cell phone plan. Let's do this. So I get all the way through the menu to speak to someone, and finally, I get this. We are experiencing higher than normal contact volumes and are unable to take your call at this time. Thank you for calling IKEA. So it turns out IKEA doesn't really put people on hold or do callbacks. They just hang up if too many people call at once. <laughs> So I called them time and time again. We are experiencing higher than normal contact volumes and are unable to take your call at this time. So many times I even memorized the menu system. Here's a little hack. If you want to talk to a person, press 422 immediately after you call. There you go, I just saved you like two minutes multiplied by the number of times you have to call them, which will probably be like 50. But I still got hung up on several times until finally, finally, it went through and I talked to a person. And they said that the store where I bought the items had actually cancelled my order and my delivery on the day that I'd bought the stuff. I'd waited three weeks for nothing. And they said that since all the stores were now closed because of Rona, I'd have to just reorder the stuff from their website and get it delivered. And they would give me a refund for my first order, the one that never came. So I did just that. I ordered the stuff from the website, waited for that to come, and waited for my refund. And that refund never came. So I called. And guess what happened? We are experiencing higher than normal contact volumes and are unable to take your call at this time. Guys, by this point, I was going crazy. So I decided to bypass IKEA completely and do a chargeback on my American Express card since I'd used the Amex Gold card to buy the stuff in the first place. So I called up American Express and guess what happened? A human answered. They told me how to dispute the charge online, so I went onto their website and did just that. Here's how you do it. Look at any charge on your account, click into it, and there is an option, dispute this charge. Then you can upload documents such as the receipt, a letter explaining what happened in PDF format, and anything else you need. In my case, I uploaded a PDF explanation, the original receipt, and the cancellation receipt that they had sent me for my refund that had never came. Now, after you file your dispute, you get a message that says it could take up to two months to sort out, and they encourage you to sort it out with the merchant at the same time, simultaneously, if you can. Don't worry that it takes a long time, because remember, the charges are frozen in your account during this time. So even though it looks like your balance is high, you are not being charged interest on those charges, 
you cannot be forced to pay them and they will not report to the credit bureaus that you have missed payments or anything like that. It's completely frozen. So this is why using a credit card is so much better than using a debit card because if this had happened on a debit card, I would have been out of pocket. That money would have left my bank account and would have been gone for like eight weeks while they were sorting out uh, this dispute. Also, some people say with a credit card, since it's the credit card company's money that is on the line, they actually sort out your dispute faster than if you'd got your issuing bank uh, for your debit card to do the same thing. Now, Amex very quickly refunded me $140 for the delivery fee. Uh, and then a few weeks later, they gave me a credit for $471 for the goods that I was missing. Uh, during this time, the dispute was still being processed and investigated. But then on May 15th, two months after the original purchase, an amazing thing happened. I got a call directly from the Ikea store where I had made that purchase and the lady said that she was going to give me a refund. They also said there were two more items that hadn't been included in my cancellation receipt and those items were worth $190. So she asked for my card number and they processed the refund and the total with delivery and those extra items that they'd forgotten to include in my cancellation receipt, it came to $831.68. On this screen here, you can see the IKEA refund and the two credits from Amex. So I went into my disputes and I canceled them both, which undid the Amex credits, but now my account was correct and balanced because I had the refund from IKEA. And the whole time while I had been sorting it out, the sort of two months that it took, I had not been charged interest um, on those charges either. Now, throughout this entire process, American Express's customer service was second to none. You know, they have slightly less acceptance than Visa and MasterCard, but when it comes to customer service, they really are outstanding. Now, IKEA has the worst customer service of any company I have ever dealt with. Saying that, the lady who called me right at the end was very nice. So it's not really the people. The people are nice. It's their system. Their entire system of the way they work, it is just terrible. And this isn't the first time or the last time that they've messed up my order. Six years ago, when I furnished my studio in Queens, they messed up my order then too. And I had to phone them several times and take several days to sort it out. And then when they messed up my order this time, the stuff I had to reorder through their website, guess what? Well, they delivered it, but they left one item out of the order. So I phoned them and guess what? We are experiencing higher than normal contact volumes and are unable to take your call at this time. So I called again and immediately dialed 422 and I did this several times until finally someone answered and they said that they would send the item by FedEx, which they did, but it took almost a month to arrive. Look, I even saved the box so I could do this. So guys, the moral of this story is always use a credit card when you're gonna buy something even remotely expensive. It'll protect you from fraud, mistakes by the seller, and there are also things on a credit card like insurances where if you break the item within the first 90 days, you can get a refund, etc. If you're interested, you can check out my other video that I'll put on screen now where I explain chargebacks in much more detail. Um, also, if you have any crazy stories like this yourself, please leave them in the comments below. If you're into stock trading or investing, we have a great deal where you can get two free stocks when you open and fund an account with Webull. Link to that is below. And if you're interested in endless stimulus updates every time there's a new law or proposal, and again, if you're watching this in 50 years time, ask your grandpa about it, it was crazy. But anyway, those videos I've shifted onto my second channel, The Business Shifu. So if you wanna subscribe to that channel for that content, uh, you can check that out too. I'll put the link on screen as well. Thanks so much for watching guys and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.